Hello everyone, it's Tanya Gabrielle, Wealth Astrometrologist, and welcome to Star Codes, where today we're looking at another stellium that's in play now and actually continues the energies that were activated with the big Capricorn stellium in January between Saturn and Pluto, who haven't met in 500 years, remember, and we're joined by the Sun and Mercury in this quadruple conjunction in, in January. That's the really big one that's impacting us all year long. Well, now Mars has joined Pluto and Capricorn. Mars has moved through the signs into Capricorn, is now conjunct Pluto and Jupiter as well. In fact, Jupiter and Pluto are doing a wonderful dance right now, which will culminate on April 4th, 4-4. So it's really heating up. And Mars, of course, is the ruler of Aries, and this triple conjunction happens at the exact time that the Sun enters Aries and starts the new season. Spring in the Northern Hemisphere, autumn in the Southern Hemisphere. So we have a huge Mars impact because of the emphasis on that planet's movement into the whole storyline, the Capricorn storyline, taking part in it now at the same time that its own sign is lit up. Now, this is happening on March 19th or 20th, depending on where you are. So by the time you watch this, the equinox will have happened. I'm recording this actually hours before the spring equinox. You know, Aries is the sign of movement, of forward momentum, of finding solutions. It's very courageous, it's fiery, it's action-oriented, and it wants to fight, it wants to win, it wants to take that Mars energy and move towards something, move towards a solution. And Mars being the ruler of Aries and taking part in this stellium is really making this a very powerful moment that can change how we feel about what is happening. So. In today's Star Codes episode, we're going to cover the planetary activation of Pluto and Jupiter through Mars, connect the dots to the Capricorn stellium, that is the defining marker of the change and purging and rebuilding energy that is sweeping the planet right now and is playing itself out all year long, and to allow the breakdown of the fear-based programming that is surrounding us now to happen, to surrender to that breakdown, to actually allow it to take place so that you don't plug in to fear and to words that trigger us, which is why I'm not going to use certain terms. So we're gonna change the narrative. We're gonna make it a healing process that's happening now. We're gonna be the sacred warrior that Mars represents and we're going to move forward with the change that I described in episode 50, the one preceding us, which was all about the crown virus and the spiritual quarantine we're under now and the retreat, the seclusion, the inward journey that we're all taking. And so this episode 50, which by the way, 50 is about freedom. That's what the number represents, freedom and, and divine protection. We're now in episode 51, which actually the ancients described as the warrior number. And lo and behold, we're describing Mars being the main player that is igniting the stellium again. And Mars is the sacred warrior. So the numbers are lining up in all these wonderful ways, as always happens. And so the signs right now in general are pointing to this undeniable force that is ultimately going to be a force for good. And that's what we covered in the last big star code reading for you. And now it's time to assimilate, to rest and regroup. And so we're going to cover today that next level of liberation with Mars and Jupiter, currently both in Capricorn, merging with Pluto. Now at its highest vibration, Mars is the sacred warrior, the sacred masculine. And so we are now taking that shift energy, that, that, that energy that's forcing us to make changes that we otherwise would not have made on our own, which is really the key here to transformation. We're, we're, we are now playing this huge role 
in Mars, a very personal planet, in getting up and stepping up and being that Christ consciousness energy. And I'm not talking a religious energy. I'm talking about a non-denominational Christ consciousness energy that is now infusing our souls, the end of the Piscean age, the age that was started with Christ. That consciousness is what we are now taking within. This is the inner transformation. This is the inner awakening. And so there's so many parts of the code that we're going to look at today that, again, point to this coming full circle and understanding that the whole narrative of liberation and love and light and freedom is within you and playing a whole big role, the biggest role really in all of this, the instrumental purging and rebuilding and bringing order to things role is, of course, the stellium that happened on January 12th. Now, that stellium happened at 22 degrees in Capricorn, and I want you to remember that number 22 because we're going to look at it very closely today, and especially at the end of the episode, and you're going to be amazed how the divine order has lined up this incredible moment right now to create positive forward momentum. So, The two planets we have to remind ourselves of are Pluto, which is about life, death, empowerment, rebirth, the phoenix rising from the ashes, being reborn, and Saturn, which is about structure and order and creating borders and strict measures and patience and learning and time. Saturn and Capricorn govern time, so the timing of things Now, at this time, Pluto is merging, coming closer and closer together with Jupiter in Capricorn, which is a conjunction that will be exact on April 4th. And Jupiter adds fortune and expansion and wisdom and justice and joy and, of course, exaggerates everything, makes it bigger. It's the biggest planet in our solar system. So this is a message that there's an infinite sense of love, that God's love, that the love of the universe, cosmic love, cosmic light is eternal, is infinite. It expands continually. It never ends. So the will of God is for you to feel that eternal joy within you. And Jupiter is the symbol of that joy ever expanding. So What we are realizing is that for most of our life on earth, we have felt separate from this love, from this joy. And Jupiter is now coming together with Pluto to empower us because Pluto is is not only the empowerment planet, it is also the purging planet. It goes to the truth, discovers what is underlying everything, the unconscious drivers that are actually really making us go in certain directions, make certain decisions, think a certain way, speak a certain way, those are now being unearthed. Remember that Capricorn is an earth sign, so it's being unearthed. And instead, we are going to plant new seeds in this earth and build new structures that are devoid, free from fear-based programming. So Pluto, which can either control or, or help us surrender and free us up to be empowered from within, is now spiritualizing the whole process with Jupiter because Jupiter is about everything to do with higher education and spirituality and religion And I mean religion in a way that is completely open-hearted, that is not a dogmatic separation, but that is truly inspirational and helping you on your path. So Jupiter governs those beliefs, that philosophy, that higher learning. And so these two planets coming together create an incredible moment of trust, trusting God, trusting source, and having a lot of hope. 
And I'm going to go more deeply into that message in our next Star Code podcast because it'll be released right around the time of this exact conjunction between Jupiter and Pluto, which, like I said, is April 4th, 4-4. And it'll be filled with messages of wealth, abundance, prosperity, flow of energy that is so joyful and filled with hope about where we are heading, right? And how we're being set free to feel completely excited to take the leadership and move into that place of joy that we always knew was there, but didn't trust may be possible for us at this time. So now we're going to look at Mars's impact because Mars is joining Pluto and Jupiter at this time, a couple of weeks before they actually come together. And Mars is giving us that prelude, that fire about really setting us free. Because when you burn something, it, first of all, turns into ashes. We have a lot of fires here in Southern California. And so when you see some of the hillsides being burned in one Uh, season, the next season, you have a lot of fresh, new, beautiful green coming up and it's a natural cycle of life, right? So we have this feeling now of Mars with Pluto, the co-rulers of Scorpio, burning the old, letting it go to ashes, and then using the new soil, the rain, the love, the caring, the new age to cleanse and build something fresh. So the shift into a new season is very, very symbolic because like I said, this is happening at the onset of the new season, the equinox. So we are expanding everything. Jupiter is just coming in and saying, okay, well, whatever you felt before, it's now being exaggerated to the point where you can feel, to the point where you can use your instinctual response to create a solution because Mars is your instinct. And so the stellium in in Capricorn is of course breaking down those old paradigms, those old structures, those patriarchal themes that Capricorn and Saturn represent, which, you know, the themes that are no longer needed. And after all, that last meetup 500 years ago was when that young priest, Catholic priest, Martin Luther broke away from the Catholic Church the dominating political and religious ruler at the time. So at this juncture where they come together again for the first time since that time, Jupiter joins the storyline this time. Mars joins the storyline and we're really coming to a head in a bigger way because they were not part of the event 500 years ago in 1518, 1519. So, you know, Pluto merging with Jupiter coming together with Mars is destroying what has outlived its welcome in the last 500 years. It's giving new life to what will take its place. And that takes time, of course, but the dismantling part of it is happening now. And that's the moment we're experiencing at this time. So Pluto coming in with enormous change and enormous transformation and taking those power structures, those Pluto structures, those two P words, notice a lot of People in power, P words, have names to their positions, P word, that show that they have power, like a president, a prime minister, a priest, a a principal of a school, a pharmacist, a physician. Um, Gosh, there's so many, you know, you could list them forever. And those are P words. Pluto is a P word and P is a very powerful number and letter, the, the letter P. So we're moving away from those old patterns of control. We're disrupting them now. That's why we're in a spiritual quarantine so that that disruption can happen as easily as possible and we don't get intertwined in the drama of it. And that means that we need to tune into obviously our our heart, our intuition a lot more, which again, Pluto represents that high sense of psychic awareness, psychic also being a P word. Now let's look at the numbers. Now let's go more closely into that. We're in the 2020s and we have universal time spring starting on the 20th of March, 2020. 
And the 2020s are all about sensitivity and patience and connection and the second sight. And of course, 2020 sight is perfect vision. So seeing the truth, bringing energy into balance because of what is awakening, what you're seeing, one-on-one relationships because it's two people and caring and divine protection because the zero in 20 brings that divine protection. Now 20 was referred to by the ancients as the awakening. And so this is very, very important because 2020 is the awakening of truth. Our 21st century, 21, the ancient Egyptians called the truth shall set you free. So we have this incredible impact of the numbers 19, which is what the crown virus is named after. It has a 19 in the end. So 19, 20, and 21 in the ancient Egyptian numerology are all based on truth. That is the truth triad. And so now in 2020, which is the middle number, the fixed star of 20, we're seeing the truth with great clarity. And that will continue throughout the decade, the 2020s. So everything's going to be revealed in this decade, and it's really starting now. So we are being led further and further into the truth. And so we have to use our intuition. We have to read the symbols and codes, which can be accessed in many ways, as we're doing now and in all my Star Code podcasts, is we're doing it through the stars and the numbers, the frequencies, the names. We're translating those symbols, and we're giving... a a narrative, we're opening the storyline, we're we're connecting the dots between everything because that's how the universe speaks, is in symbols. The symbols can also be read in the records, the Akashic records. They can be accessed by noticing and listening intently to the signs in your daily life. That's for personal forward momentum and understanding. And so these vaults of truth can be accessed by starting to connect those dots one by one, making that tangential kind of overall view of what is going on. And tangential is about the Aquarian age that we're going into. Aquarian, Aquarius is about those tangents, those out of the box thinking, get out of the box and make those connections that you otherwise would not have seen because you're so focused on this one thing. So we need to have a broader and broader view and then hone in and create order from what we find, which is the Capricorn impact, the earthing of it, and earth itself. I'm just gonna say here what's so amazing to me is to see how earth, the mother earth is recuperating, rejuvenating at this time where there is far less human traffic really uh, meaning cars and you know boats you look at venice and the venice canals and the fish coming back and the swans coming back and there's so many examples of earth mother earth who of course keeps thriving no matter what nothing's changed there you know change of seasons happening right mother earth continues mother earth is our source of life on earth our source of everything really it is god speaking through 3d right and as we move into the next age and appreciate even more dimensions mother earth will be there is a constant in our life just like divine love is a constant and mother earth right now is undergoing a healing and so there's a lot of good that is happening that we can just be very very grateful for Because Mother Earth's replenishing and healing as we change into the new season and see the truth in a a deeper way. So at the moment that our seasons change, the moment of the equinox, equinox meaning balance, Mother Earth is rebalancing. Mother Earth is healing. Mother Earth is blooming, is recuperating and so this is like the truth this is the truth this is what we need to see we need to appreciate the goodness that is coming out of this moment and we need to also feel 
that sense of being newborn, just like a newborn child is just fully engaged and inquisitive and non-judgmental. This judgment, this is the this is what's going, the the judgment of others and the separation from each other, this is no longer in play. This is the energy that, that is being dismantled and destroyed. And so Mother Earth is for everyone to appreciate at any time. There is no factor in terms of cultural or religious or political separation about living on Earth and appreciating each other. And so we are all in this together. We all are on this beautiful planet. So we are being asked right now to change our own understanding and behavior in relation to Mother Earth. Remember, Capricorn is an Earth sign. And so this is very, very important to understand the, the, the impact that your words, your feelings, your interactions, your everything you do, how you live your life impacts the big cycle. And this is the number 22 again. So let's look at all these twos now. So 20 is extremely sensitive. 20 is about listening, intuition, balance. 20 asks you to just be to just listen and find the solution, to be creative from a place of silence and to see how energy is being born in that place of reflection. So enjoy having these moments right now to yourself because even if it is under enforced outside circumstances, you can discover who you are within. You can take this time to be creative because there's something really magical happening here. One of the really important parts of this vault of truth lies in the acknowledgement of and activation of your inner sacred warrior, your, your creator, the Mars primal energy of creation, of being the first sign and moving forward and being original and acknowledging that you are unique. And that's all Mars, that's the sacred warrior. That is the courage that's built into your divine DNA code of light. Just as you have the Venus energy with the divine feminine and the divine code of love, the DNA code of love, we have that love and light code built within us. It comes from the stars and that's where we come from. So love and light is really the yin and yang that we're dealing with, the yin and yang of life. And this is the truth that sets us free. This is the thread that connects us all to each other. And all we need is to be one with God. And God is represented by the number 10, which is one and zero, which is male and female, literally and figuratively, and love and light. So we are here together, Pluto being part of the purging, the empowerment, the release of fear, uncovering the truth, Jupiter now being the planet of faith, of justice, and of bringing things into balance, into justice when the truth comes out. So this is an amazing momentous time. You're being given an opportunity to take a quantum leap. And that is the awakening. The quantum leap is to seize on the opportunity now to take the sight you have, to take the stimulation from Mars, to act on who you are at soul level, meaning to create your reality the way you feel is for your highest good. And when that triple conjunction of Mars in Capricorn, the sign of leadership and career and rulership and, and governing others, when that Mars energy comes in, it gives us the fortitude, the courage, the self-sufficiency, the self-determination of Capricorn to fire up with the tools we have and rise above it all because that's what Aries and Mars are about. Mars being the ruler of Aries, Aries being the sign the sun just entered for the beginning of spring and the beginning of autumn in the southern hemisphere. Aries is about that courage and that new sense of life. And both Aries and Capricorn are cardinal signs and cardinal signs are about new beginnings. They start our seasons. They are about creativity and action. They initiate a new season, a new era, a new epoch. And so Aries is just totally engaged 
in starting something fresh. So this is what you're meant to be doing now. So whatever Aries sets out to do, Aries wants to finish and as quickly as possible. It's a very impatient sign. So of course, we're not, we don't want to be impatient, but we want to use that Mars energy with that conjunction with Jupiter and Pluto to make faster progress now, to move forward in a way that allows us to, to, to understand that the cure is around the corner, the momentum for containment and cures are now moving much faster. It just is energetically what is written in the code. Mars speeds everything up. Pluto transforms and finds the leadership to get things done. And Jupiter is about faith and truth and joy and fortunate events. So this is really, really exciting. So let's move now to the number 22, because this is where I really want to go to wrap it all into a nice, beautiful bow for you. This Mars-Jupiter conjunction that's happening at the same time as the equinox when the sun moves into Aries, so beginning of spring. This Mars-Jupiter conjunction happens at 22 degrees in Capricorn. 22 degrees is the same degree that the stellium happened in January between Saturn and Pluto, which hasn't happened in 200 years, uh, 500 years, excuse me. <laughs> Number two is obviously on my mind, 500 years. And the, it became a stellium because Sun and Mercury were right there as well. 22 degrees, this is quite extraordinary that that same degree is the moment that Mars and Jupiter merge together. And it's a huge sign about the amazing rapid progress that we're going to make moving forward now because the 22 means the completion of a cycle. It's a master number and the appearance of 22 at any time is about peace because it's also the architect of peace and the completion of a cycle. And isn't that the truth? Are we not completing a 500 year cycle and an even greater 26,000 year cycle? When you look at 2012, that just happened a few years ago. So in the, in the, in the scope of things, 26,000 years, this is the beginning of that next cycle. And of course our new age is happening at the same time as well. So this is divinely planned. We're in the 2020s, 22 degrees Capricorn is being activated for the stellium in January. And now the next conjunction at the same degree, 22 degrees between Jupiter and Mars. So we are basically now moving into the meaning of our 2000s, the century of the twos, as opposed to the ones, the 2000s of two becoming one, two relating to each other, you and source, you and another, the intimacy of that connection is where we are at now. Okay, so let's look at the number two now. So as you know, there are many prophecies about the second coming. Why are we talking about that? Isn't that interesting that it's again another two? We are in the 2000s, we're in the 2020s, the stellium at 22 degrees, the Mars conjunction with Jupiter at 22 degrees. This is all two energy. So I want you to meditate on this second coming energy while you're experiencing the spiritual quarantine. Consider that the connection that we're all seeking all along is truly the awakening and that is the inner knowing that is so strong that you know without a doubt without a shred of doubt that you and source you and god you and christ consciousness are one you and that is the two that is the second coming so you and source are the two that become one. I want you to meditate on that and trust in the message because you want to engage completely in the, the, the part of you that wants to be told what to do, which is now being let go of. The top-down leadership is what we're relinquishing, what we're being freed from. 
and totally understand that you are inseparable from God. You need to feel free to let go of everything that you've believed up until this point, up until this moment, and just feel inseparable. Because it is the separation that caused the fear. The fear of not being connected. So connection is part of the number two. Being connected, you have to have two to be connected, right? And that is the true awakening that we're in now. So let's end with the reminder that 20 is what the ancients called the awakening. And we are truly in a great awakening. We are celebrating spring on the 20th of March, universal time. We are in 2020. And then we have the 2020 also symbolized by the number 22 degrees which is incredible. So let's all join together now and each one of us feel that connection to source, that connection to God, Christ consciousness. You can give it many different terms. Words are just a way to get to the feeling, just like music doesn't have words, but it helps you feel. So don't take issue with certain words that are used if they offend you look at why that might be and what you were indoctrinated to believe and let go of words that don't appeal to you i'm just using what's come what's coming through so be in love with the awakening be in love with your life love your life into being surrender to that love surrender to that higher divine force allow it to co-create with you co-creating is two interdependency is two this is where we're all going we are heading into that freedom that is the truth that will set you free so we are now experiencing a new era a new epoch It's time for us to let go of the old ways, our old thoughts, our old languaging, our old ways of interacting with each other and move the heart into the mind, merge them into one. Our relationships are reflecting who we are. So whatever we say to another person, imagine you're saying it to yourself. This is we are all one. This is you and the other becoming one. And that's truly the message here. So we will continue every week with decoding the star codes. And if you want to decode your own personal star code, go to starcodeclass.com where I have a free webinar for you that describes your birthday and your birth name and also the numbers in your astrology chart. So enjoy that. Have a beautiful week, a beautiful beginning of our new season. And I'll see you in next week's Star Code podcast. Bye-bye for now and lots of lots of love.